Well, if you want to just be able to not take anything else on a car motor apart or your motorcycle on the bottom end and just take the top cover off like the rocker cover off on any engine what you do is you get your little portable hand grinder or modal Dremel tool or die grinder and grind off one of those bumps on the chain then while it's still on the sprocket get a small like hammer and pin and punch it through then when you've got that chain pin knocked almost all the way out, get some really thin wire and tie it to here so you have an extra piece of wire tied to it and tie it to the other side before you split the chain in two pieces or at least one broken piece. Then get your new chain, do the same thing, grind off a bump, get your little punch pin, knock one of the pins through but don't lose it. And don't have to tie a wire to this one, all you do is use a wire, once you knock the pin out of both chains and not drop it down inside your engine, use a piece of wire and you tie the two chains together, the two broken chains together. Then you rotate your crankshaft and wind it all the way through to the old chain winds itself all the way out and now you've just got the new chain wound inside the motor, always making sure one of the ends doesn't fall down and drop in and cause you a lot of extra work fishing it out. Then when it's all the way wound through, push one of the original pins on the new chain back through again, linking the new chain back together. Then get your MIG welder, set it to maybe the lowest setting, and very carefully weld a tiny little blob back on to make like the peened over end that's on there now. Now if you do that right, like I have in all the engines I've done this with cars and motorcycles, it never breaks or comes apart. And <laughs> if you want to be really sneaky, you could charge the customer for the full price of the job, but it might have only taken you a half hour to do, even if it was a complicated car. Sweet, but then you also take the risk if you didn't weld that little blob on properly, and you make sure you don't melt the little chain face. Well, you're taking a risk that it could come apart if you don't do it right, but it hasn't happened for me. The final step before reassembly is put the two chains together and see if they're the same length, just to make sure you got the right part. I did, so we're all set. Now I just take the new chain and shove it up through the hole and just hook it with a piece of coat hanger or something and pull it all the way back up to the top and ready to reassemble. I'm just using a little piece of wire with a hook on it to pull my chain up into position. That worked perfect. Now that it's all pulled through, you want to set the sprocket back on, but of course it'll fall off, so you've got to sort of hold it with your hand so it doesn't, and leave one of these cutout spaces pointing upwards, and then slip the camshaft in. Doesn't matter what position you have your chain on right now, doesn't matter what position you have your camshaft on, we'll set all that later. So now that I've slipped the cam in, everything's still all loose and floppy and not set. Rotate your cam till you think it's in TDC, and that's on this one where the little bolt hole pointed straight up. Then go to the other side of the motor and check here and make sure that's still on TDC, and it is. As you can see, this is just loosely hanging here. That's no problem. So now we just want to rotate this so the hole lines up and then lift it up and put the bolt in making sure that the slack is on this side and the bolt lines up if you pull it a little back this way so that the tension side of the chain when the motor is running has no slack and the, ten and the other side of the chain I mean this is the torque side which the adjuster goes on has all the slack so we're ready. Just put it in finger tight. Now it's still kind of loose. It might even slip off there. So it's a good idea after you get that thing in finger tight is to release the tensioner locking things again and let the tensioner move over now that you know everything's in the right position. As soon as they come loose, you'll notice the tensioner will jump down, become a bit shorter, bend and move itself over. 
and maybe jerk this a little bit as it tightens the chain. Oh, I heard it click and move over. Perfect. Now it's safe to give the engine a half a rotation, or at least one rotation on the crank, half a rotation on the cam, to put the other bolt in. Now you can see the two lobes pointing upwards, and we're ready to put that bolt in the hole. Now even those, though those two bolts are still finger tight, that's fine. Give your engine a bit of a rotation so that there's some tension on this side of the chain, the torque side of the chain. That creates the most slack on this side. While these adjuster bolts are still loose, take the screwdriver, push on here, just to make sure it's all the way down in position. That's your tensioner. Then tighten up the two bolts again. Now rotate your crankshaft nut and set one of those nuts or bolts to the other side, the front side of the motor now. And put your long socket on it and tighten it. And this base will stop it from turning everything. Like so. <sighs> Make it fairly tight, no Loctite or anything. Then rotate it around again until this screw comes in the same position and tighten it just the same way. Now I've got both of those tight, so I'm going to rotate the engine until both cam lobes are pointing downwards, so I'm in TDC position, and double check my timing marks before I start reassembling the engine. So I bring that nut to the vertical position. I look in the hole, rotate this, it's exactly on TDC now, where it says T in a line. Check here, that's in vertical position, lobes are pointing down, all set for reassembly. Next up, just put those two caps back on screwdriver tight. Now it's up to you whether you want to reassemble the top of the motor first, or the bottom of the motor. It makes no difference, and if your valves are already set right, they don't need to be reset again. This is a single cylinder, four valves per cylinder. I'm looking at the faces on the rocker arms and they're in good shape too. And I just reinstalled that pin, whatever it does. So put this gear on any old way. Your timing advance trigger head, lining up that mark to that pin. There, clicked in. Washer and nut. Making sure you don't lose the little pin that's in here. There is a little tiny pin there. So washer first. Nut. No Loctite and use the air tool to slam it back on so it won't loosen. Good enough. And now notice that the timing chain is very tight. No slack. Once your motor's all done and you drive it for about a week, you should stop and the motor's off. Loosen both those nuts again. Let the tensioner re-shrink itself, bend itself over, and, and tighten the chain again. And I would advise two or three times a year, if you want to make your bike last a long time, to loosen those two nuts and let the tensioner do its thing. That's how it presets itself. Other more modern bikes might just have one bolt or one little funny round thing sticking out the side of the motor. You may never have to adjust it. It'll do everything by itself. But if it has a nut sticking out of that round thing, you may have to loosen it and adjust it. Now after cleaning off your oil filter screen and any other grits and debris in the bottom of your engine, it's ready to put the side cover back on. Once you clean the mated surface on both sides, both covers, and put the new gasket on. I always put a little bit of silicone on my gaskets to ensure no leaking. Okay, I'm using bathroom silicone one. 
Never use silicone two on engines. Silicone one is the best. Best bathroom and kitchen silicone is the best. Or you can use the orange or black engine RTV silicone. I've got a little bit all the way around. A little bit more where my wire connector goes through. So I'm ready to stick the gasket on now. This gasket has a little raised bump for a pre-sealing edge. I still want to put a little tiny bit of silicone on this edge just to be sure. Make sure you haven't lost any of your alignment dowel pins that go on your engine side cover too. Bit of silicone is on, ready to put it back together. I've moved that little lever away from the hole. What that little lever does is it's hooked to the Kickstarter cam for a compression release. And that little bump at the back of that shaft is the Kickstarter cam which when you get your foot part way down the stroke gives it full compression but the first part of the stroke opens the exhaust valves just a little bit. Sounds good. Yeah, I can feel that hitting the Kickstarter cam. If I move the clutch lever, it starts to push the case open, which means the clutch is assembled correctly. So we're ready to put the bolts back in and tighten them evenly. Now the Kickstarter. Now I've cleaned both these surfaces and there is a special kind of silicone or gasket stuff or Loctite product for doing this to put them back together. But I'm not going to go out and bother buying any. I've always had pretty good luck with the good old fashioned silicone. But the real products are actually a little bit better. One that Loctite makes is called Gasket Maker. Works quite well. So when you're putting this thing back on, make sure your engine's on TDC because you don't want the spring tension trying to lift this thing up while you're trying to put it on at the same time. Now to put the valve lash adjuster covers on, gas tank seat, and the engine crash protector or rock protector. Now ready to put the gas tank on and don't forget to add oil. So we're all set for takeoff. Let's see if she's going to start. Haven't even kicked it over once yet. We're using our Cressida pod. No tree pods available at the moment. Wish me luck. Now to go for a cruise out the wild blue yonder. And now for my reward. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it all worthwhile. <laughs>